If you've just recently started studying Japanese with flashcards, then you're very likely being negatively affected by your previous experiences with traditional education and considerably slowing down your progress in learning Japanese. In this video, I will explain how you can rethink your approach to using flashcards in the context of learning Japanese from native content, and how this change of mindset might greatly improve how quickly you learn new Japanese words, concepts, and grammar. Studying Japanese using space repetition flashcards is getting more and more popular and there are new people starting on their journey learning Japanese every day. This is a great thing, but many of these new learners get stuck in approaching flashcards from a traditional education mindset which hinders their progress. What do I mean by this? Well, in traditional education, we're largely taught to think that there is a correct answer to everything, that we have to learn everything thoroughly, and that how many answers we get correct matters a great deal. But actually, this kind of mindset is very detrimental when it comes to efficiently studying Japanese with flashcards. Let me explain to you why. But first, let's go over a few main concepts related to space repetition flashcard. Space repetition flashcards are actually really simple to understand. They have a front and a back side. On the front side is a piece of information that you will be tested on. For example, it can be a Japanese word, a sentence, or the audio from a word or a sentence. The back of the card will contain information that will allow you to check if you are able to correctly recall the piece of information being tested on the front of the card. For example, if the front of the card is a Japanese word, it would test if you can recall how to read the word and its meaning. And the back of the card would include the reading, definition, and or a picture of the word that you can check yourself against. And again, for another example, in the case the front of the card is the audio of a sentence, the back of the card would include the sentence written out in Japanese and its translation in English, so that you would be able to check if you correctly heard and understood the sentence. In summary, the front of flashcards have a piece of information to prompt the recall of the answer which can be checked for accuracy on the back of the card. So if you correctly recall the information prompted on the front of the card, then you would pass the card which means to mark it as being recalled correctly and then that card will be scheduled out again for review in the future. If you fail to recall the information correctly, you would instead fail the card which would cause the next review of the card to be much sooner in the future than if you had passed it. Looking at how simple this system of passing and failing flashcards is, it might be difficult to imagine how someone could go wrong. Let me explain. New learners starting to study Japanese with flashcards who only have a history of traditional education tend to think of their flashcards as the mainstay of their Japanese learning, meaning that they feel the majority of their learning does and should happen in their flashcards, and therefore they seek to try and develop a full understanding of the words, grammar, and language concepts that they are learning within their flashcards. One form this often takes is learners wanting to make multiple flashcards for the same word. For example, they might create an audio card for a word, a sentence card for a word, and even a card where they are given the English and should recall the Japanese word itself. Another form this often takes is learners adjusting the settings of their flashcard applications in such a way that they will review new flashcards many more times than the default number in order to increase the percentage of the cards they answer correctly. In flashcard apps, the percentage of cards answered correctly is known as the retention rate. Most space repetition flashcard apps, including our our own have a scheduling system designed so that a learner will achieve a retention rate between something like 85 to 90 percent. The learners who adjust their flashcard app settings that I just referred to often have a retention rate of 98 to 99 percent. This probably sounds great but understand that they are usually spending three or four times longer learning each flashcard in order to achieve this high retention rate. I will explain more about why this is counterproductive shortly, but at this point, it should be clear that the goal of learners following such strategies is to attempt to build a very strong understanding of the new words they are learning through the medium of flashcards. To understand why this is a problem, we should first think about how many words you need to actually learn in order to reach a solid level of understanding and ultimately fluency in Japanese. In the previous video we uploaded here on the channel, we talked about how many words are needed to understand Japanese Netflix, for example. Please reference that video if you want to know about that topic in more detail. Anyways, in that video, we saw that to understand 95% of all the words on Japanese Netflix, you would need to learn 12,041 words. And if you wanted to understand 99% of the words used, you would need to understand a whopping 37,247 words. Even taking into account 
count some level of inaccuracy in these numbers because the frequency list analyzed includes names and other formal nouns, for example, it should be clear that to build a strong understanding of Japanese that you will need to learn a lot of words over time. This alone should give you a big hint as to why an approach that seeks to build a high level of understanding for new words through the medium of flashcards is misguided and going to slow down your progress. But it's likely not clear to you yet why this is, so let me explain. But in order to do so, we need to first talk about what goal in particular an immersion or input based learner should have when studying Japanese with flashcards. So why are input-based language learners even using flashcards? Have you ever asked yourself that? You might hear some people answer simply that it's to learn new Japanese. Well, that sounds pretty reasonable, right? And admittedly, it's not too far from the truth. However, a more accurate representation of why flashcards are used is rather to introduce yourself to new Japanese words, grammar, and concepts, and to retain a memory of your introduction to those words, grammar, and concepts, such that when consuming Japanese Japanese content, you're able to increase your understanding of the words you've introduced yourself to. This is an important distinction and one that recognizes that the majority of one's learning will take place when watching and reading content and not when studying flashcards. But don't get me wrong, flashcards are a highly recommended supplement to effectively learning Japanese, particularly at the beginner and intermediate stages. I've actually come up with what I think is actually a pretty good analogy to how flashcards study and watching and reading Japanese content content relate to each other. Let me share it with you now. Say that we have a goal of gathering rainwater using cups. In order to gather the rainwater, we need to place our cups out in the rain so that they can fill up with water. And of course, the more cups we place out into the rain, the more water we will be able to gather. And again, of course, the cups in this analogy are the new words, grammar, and concepts we are learning in our flashcards, and the rain is the time that we spend watching and reading content. In effect, what we are doing when studying new information in flashcards is laying out more cups in order to gather water next time it rains. Let's think about two people who are both studying flashcards for 30 minutes per day. In this video, we're not going to talk about how much time you should spend on watching and reading content, because that's a nuanced topic, and how much time you should spend with native content highly depends on what stage of the learning process you are currently in. We'll make a video about this topic in the near future though. So let's simply consider two people who each spend 30 minutes per day on flashcard study. One person follows the strategy of either making multiple flashcards for the new words they're learning or studying their flashcards extra times in order to maximize their retention rate. The other person instead spends their entire 30 minutes focused on learning new words, almost always only creating a single flashcard for each word. Which of these learners will be able to gather more water when it rains? The latter learner is clearly able to set more cups out ready to catch the rain within those 30 minutes than the former is. Let's think about this in a bit higher detail for a moment. What is the difference between these two strategies when applied to our analogy? Well, the first learner is basically trying to pre-fill some of their cups before placing them out into the rain, but is also placing less cups out to catch rain. The latter is is clearly just focused on placing cups out to catch rain. When it rains sufficiently, it's pretty clear that the learner who's placed more cups out will end up collecting more rainwater. But there's another level to this analogy as well. Not every cup placed out to catch rain is a cup of the same size. Concrete nouns, for example, words like neko, which means cat, or uchusen, which means spaceship, are words that have a single clear meaning. These words are the equivalent of very small cups. And in fact, such cups are often easily filled up with water, or speaking more literally, effectively learned just by studying flashcards. But other words are more abstract and or have a wide variety of different usage cases, and thus they are the equivalent of much larger cups that require a lot more water to fill. Words like yapari, kakeru, or sekaku, come to mind in Japanese. These larger cups take a ton of water to fill and although with enough effort, they can actually be filled effectively through flashcards. Remember that the time you're spending filling each of these cups with water using flashcards is time you're not spending either laying out new cups or filling the cups you've already laid out with rainwater. To drop the analogy and speak plainly for a moment, the time you're spending trying to nail down the meaning 
usage cases and new ones for a specific word using flashcards, it's time you're not spending introducing yourself to new words or watching and reading content, which will consolidate and increase your understanding of what you've already been introduced to. The good news is that the majority of the most difficult to understand words, grammar, or concepts, which have the widest variety of usage cases or a nuance that is often the most difficult for a learner to understand are also the most common words. For example, the words the and a uh in English are often difficult to understand and master for an English learner from Japan or China where equivalent words don't exist or aren't often used. But as you know, the and a uh are extremely common words in English. And for someone following an input-based approach, they will very quickly develop a deep understanding of those words if just given enough exposure to them. The same thing applies to words like yapari, kakeru, or sekaku in Japanese that I mentioned earlier. They are all pretty common words, so you can trust that if you watch and read enough content that you will over time build a natural intuitive understanding of them. In the future, we plan to make a video about where the biggest improvements in one's Japanese ability comes from because this is a big area of confusion, but I will briefly just mention here that you make the most progress when learning Japanese, not when you're learning new words, but rather when you're consuming content where you already know all the words in that content and can instead focus on the nuances of how they are being used together. At Migaku, we call this type of content zero target, which means the content has no new words, concepts, or grammar. So for example, a sentence in which you've already introduced yourself and have some level of understanding of all the words, grammar, and concepts in that sentence is called a zero target sentence. It is by exposing yourself to many unique zero target sentences that you most improve your Japanese ability. And it is with this understanding that we recommend an approach where given a choice of how to spend your time when studying flashcards, that rather than focusing on building a deeper understanding of each word you're learning, that instead you focus on simply introducing yourself to more words and grammar, etc. Such that you are increasing the number of zero target sentences that you will come across when watching and reading Japanese. And this will increase the benefit you gain from your time spent with Japanese content. Before moving on, I want to concretely give an example of the form this might take. For example, instead of learning 10 flashcards with a 100% retention rate and taking more time on each card, it is better assuming the same amount of time invested studying flashcards to instead learn 20 words with even a retention rate as low as 80%. Following the first approach in theory will retain 10 out of the 10 words you are learning, but in the latter approach you would retain from 16 to 18 out of the 20 words depending on the exact retention rate, which is close to double the number of words you're effectively introducing yourself to each day. That being said, this is only an example and is not prescriptive of what you should do, but simply a good illustration that by following the latter approach, it is usually possible with the same time commitment to considerably increase the number number of words you are introducing yourself to and retaining on a daily basis. This sort of lower retention rate, higher number of total words retained strategy does come with the necessity to not emotionally react to failing flashcards. Failing flashcards is not a big deal and is simply a part of the process. A bit later in this video, I will mention to you what you can do with specific cards that you are failing too often, but overall, just focus on not reacting negatively to failing flashcards. This is not traditional learning and your flashcard reviews are not an exam. Now that I've mentioned that you should focus on creating a single flashcard for new words, grammar, and concepts, I should mention that this is not an absolute rule and that in fact, there are times where creating multiple flashcards for the same words is not only acceptable, but recommended as well. For example, the word nichu, which means during the day or means Japanese Chinese, such as Japanese Chinese diplomacy or relations, for example. It would be valid to make one card for each meaning of this word as the meanings are very distinct from each other. As a side note, the intonation pattern or pitch accent of such words, including this word, is also often different depending on the meaning it is being used as but that's beyond the scope of this video damn what is that bro oh my 
There is another scenario where you might want to make another card for the same word. And that is when a word has similar meanings, but is used in a distinct way. For example, teoageru means to raise your hand and reioageru means to raise an example. Or shio kakeru means to put on salt such as on food. Ongako kakeru means to put on music. You can see that the meanings of these words are similar, although the usage cases are different. I personally try to not always make new cards in these circumstances though, because often if you know a basic meaning of a word, it is enough to understand its different usage cases and context. Another reason I try to avoid making a new card in these cases every time is because there are a ton of words with multiple usages. And if I made a new card for all of the words similar usage cases, then it would take up time that I could use learning new words. For example, well, let's take the English word jump in a sentence like the rabbit jumped and the stock price jumped. They are slightly different usage cases, but someone who understands the basic meaning of jump can likely understand both sentences without trouble. That being said, if you feel you're having trouble with such words, then this is a valid time to create multiple flashcards. Also, creating multiple flashcards for grammar patterns you're having trouble with is also fine, but I would personally try to sneak in a new word in the cards you create for these grammar patterns as well. So the basic idea is that besides when a word really has very different meanings such as nichu, you should only make multiple cards for words and grammar you actually see yourself having trouble with. There's no need to preemptively make multiple flashcards for every word. I often hear people worried about not recognizing words that they have flashcards for when consuming Japanese content. And there are usually a couple reasons for this. One is if you don't recognize a word when listening to it, that is basically okay. Becoming able to accurately understand all the words you hear requires many hours of listening to Japanese. So I would not worry about that if you're still relatively new to the language. If you're not at the point where you can listen to a Japanese sentence and clearly identify words in it that you didn't understand, then you're not at a point where you should worry about whether you're not understanding words that you've already introduced yourself to in your flashcards. For example, if I make up an English word in a sentence like, I gator the race as always. If you have a strong English listening ability, you're probably instantly thinking, what the heck does gator mean? And you were able to clearly hear the word that you didn't understand in the sentence. If your Japanese listening ability is not yet approaching this level, then you don't really need to be too concerned with not always being able to pick out the words you've been studying when listening. It's going to take time to get to that point. And simply not being able to pick out a word doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. Another point is not being able to recall how to read or understand the meaning of a word when reading. Well, yes, of course this will happen. It's again, a natural part of the process. But what's important to keep in mind is, of the words you're introducing yourself to in your flashcards, what percentage of words are you actually having trouble with? I can almost guarantee you it's not all of them. It's very likely to be a minority of them. So if it's not all of them, then why put in the extra effort of making extra flashcards for or seeking a higher retention rate on all of the words you're studying with flashcards. I forget where I read this, but I previously read multiple books about talent and skill building. A key point in those books was that the most successful skill builders focused on improving their weaknesses disproportionately. They didn't apply the same amount of focus to the areas they were doing well in. The same applies here. First of all, give it time if you're having trouble picking out some words when consuming content, especially if they are common words. Simply give it some time first. Look up the reading and meaning of that word again as needed and simply continue reading. If later you find you're still having trouble with it, then maybe make another card for it. But don't preemptively put in more effort when learning all words because the majority of the words you learn won't require extra attention. The last thing I want to mention is how to deal with flashcards you fail repeatedly. These are often referred to as leech cards. And if you find you're failing a card too much, you should either edit the card in some way that makes it easier to understand, for example, by using an easier sentence on the card, or simply delete the card and only create another card for it later when it comes up in Japanese content again and you feel you understand it better. A good analogy for your overall Japanese learning journey is that of a fruit picker who is climbing a tree to pick fruit. He starts picking the fruit at the bottom of the tree and he doesn't concern himself with picking the fruit at the top of the tree until he's climbed a bit further up it. If you find yourself having trouble with some specific words to the point it causes you frustration, then much like the fruit picker would do, simply stop reaching for them for now and pick from the nearby fruit until you've climbed further up the tree. 
This video came out longer than I had originally planned, and dare I say, there is a lot more that I think can still be said on this topic. The good news for those of you who made it this far in the video is that in the coming weeks, Stevie and I will be starting a podcast where we will dive into language learning topics in a long form format. So if you're still not satisfied with what you've heard today, then be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can be notified when the podcast starts. I also invite you to join our community Discord server through the link in the description below. And if you're looking for an ever improving input based Japanese learning platform that can take you from absolute beginner to fluent in Japanese, then check out our website and consider signing up for a free trial of Migaku. In closing, I'm sure learning Japanese probably feels overwhelming at times. For me, it certainly did. And I know it can be tempting to lean on our habits and preconceptions built during our experiences with traditional education, but I can assure you that there are better approaches that will lead to faster progress towards your goals. I hope you found some value in this video, and I sincerely wish you the best of luck on your journey learning Japanese.